For those who have heard the message, believe in the report, and are planning to make your exit out of Babylon, America, I am here to encourage you, to strengthen you by Yahweh's word, and to embolden you with the testimony of Yehoshua to do what Yahweh calls you to do, to come out of her, my people. So you do not partake in her sins, neither do you receive in her plagues. I have a series of questions in the queue that I'm going to answer in subsequent videos. I have begun a scoffer alert for you all so that you can discern and judge righteously. I have been in the faith for almost seven years now and a disciple of Yehoshua. I've sat in the council of Yahweh. I've learned Torah. And although the learning process is never ending, to judge is to first judge yourself, to take the beam out of your own eye, to work out your salvation with the fear and trembling of Yahweh, and then you will receive wisdom, understanding, and insight of what Yahweh is saying to you, as well as others like you on the path of Yah Yehoshua. So I'm going to get right into this, and this video will be a little lengthy. However, it is an edification to those who are truly seeking Yahweh. It will cut those who scoff and mock at the perfect will of Yahweh. Let's begin. I'm here at Proverbs 1, and we're going to dissect what exactly is a scoffer and a mocker. The beginning of wisdom, verse 1, the Proverbs of Solomon, the son of David, king of Israel, to know wisdom and instruction, to discern the words of understanding to receive instruction in wise dealing, in righteousness, justice, and equity, to give prudence to the simple, knowledge and discretion to the young man, that the wise man may hear and increase in learning, that the man of understanding may attain to sound counsel. This is an establishment of what it looks like when you are beginning to learn the knowledge of Yahweh, how one should sit and be quiet, take off any biases or any ideals or any ideas or any doctrines that they have once learned and coming into the knowledge of Yahweh, putting those down and listening to what Yahweh has to say on the matter, holding your questions and knowing that eventually whatever questions you have, they will be answered, but not the way you probably want them to be answered. They will be answered through Yah's wisdom through his instruction, that means that you must first be obedient to Yah's word in order to understand why he's telling you to do something or what benefit it has to you on the negative or the positive. And also, it's to help you to truly discern the words of understanding. I have understanding of Yahweh's word, the commandment of Yahweh to come out of America. I also have understanding of the Torah. I was taught by a prophet of Yahweh. This is how you're able to discern the words of understanding. Is how they apply in the natural realm. How they apply to you as you are returning to Yahweh in spirit and in truth and in contrition and humility of spirit. Casting down your pride in every imagination that will have you to challenge the word of Yahweh. Being like a child, acting like you know nothing. The word says to become a fool in order to become wise in Yahweh. That means that Yahweh's knowledge and his understanding is way above ours. We can't even comprehend it. However, when we learn of him and we obey him, then that understanding will be had. And, the, and it's through that instruction that we will learn wisdom and we will learn righteousness and judgment at the end of the day. In that judgment, being fair towards all, being fair to the your brother, being fair to a stranger, being fair to a minor, being fair to an elder, being fair to the poor, being fair to the rich, and so on and so forth. That's equity, making sure that justice is executed in all situations to all people and to give prudence to the simple. Shrewdness. Remember that? Be as wise as a serpent and as harmless as a dove. That's wisdom, craftiness, how to handle to the simple, those who are stupid, those who are foolish, those who lack discernment, wisdom, wise dealing, and equity, knowledge and discretion to the young man. I am young. Absolutely. I am for sure young. But not only did Yahweh give his disciples instructions on how to wield his sword of truth, but wasn't Samuel a child? 
when he was ordained to be a prophet? Wasn't David, who was called at a young age, the one who challenged Goliath, the giant of the Philistine army, because he defied the power and the sovereignty of Yahweh Yah Yehoshua? Aren't we talking about children? So age really doesn't matter in this, in this, in this fight. Being old does not mean you have wisdom. And it doesn't mean you can discern the, the words of understanding. Neither does it mean that you're dealing in righteousness, justice, and equity. The beginning of knowledge comes from Yahweh's word and being humble to his spirit to learn. Even a young man can learn it and do it. And that means that we must hear what's being taught. Yes, I sat in the council of Yahweh for almost five years. I sat and I listened. I had some questions, but I sat and I listened. Sometimes I took notes, but every, every time that I was taught the Torah, I sat and I opened my ears and I extended it to my heart. And that's why I've been increased in my learning. That's why I have understanding and I can attain sound counsel. That what I'm saying is in balance to the positive and the negative of this return. And so not only are we supposed to fear him, but we're also supposed to fear the consequences if we don't. To understand a proverb and parables, the words of riddles and of the wise, the fear of Yahweh is the beginning of knowledge, but the foolish despise wisdom and instruction. That's just what I said. The fear of Yahweh is the beginning of knowledge. You must first fear the living Elohim, the creator of heaven and earth. Yahweh, Almighty, the Sovereign, the Righteous One, the Holy One of Israel, you must fear Him first, and that's how you will attain knowledge. Yahweh's Word is full of terrible things, full of terrible proverbs and parables and words and riddles. But to the wise, it will be understanding to them. It'll be wisdom and instruction to them if they do it. But to those who are foolish and those who are mockers and scoffers, Yahweh says, let them mock, let them scoff, but I will indeed have the last laugh. The enticement of sin, verse 8, my son, listen to your father's instructions and don't forsake your mother's teaching. In this walk, my father is Yahweh, Yah Yehoshua, and in this walk, my mother is prophetess Sibiah, who has taught me the word of Yahweh in its perfection. That means she has faithfully walked it out. And she's been proven and tried and tested and given Yahweh's Holy Spirit to then teach others. For they will be a garland to grace your head and chains around your neck. That sounds familiar, right? Shema Yisrael, Yahweh your Elohim, Yahweh is one. And you shall bind this Torah, these words, as a sign upon your hand and as frontlets between your eyes and write them on the doorpost of your house and on your gates. We should be doing this in our walking and in our talking, and it should constantly be our, in, on our mind as a reminder, this word, to not be enticed by sin. It's supposed to be around your neck. The covenant, the Ten, the Ten Commandments, is a bond. It is you putting yourself under slavery to the master, Yahweh, until he frees you and regards you as a friend. My son, if, son, if sinners entice you, don't consent. If they say, come with us, let's lie and wait for blood. Let's lurk secretly for the innocent without cause. Let's swallow them up alive like Sheol and whole like those who go down into the pit. So to those who know my story, I've been a part of ministries who've done this very same thing. They're liars, they're cheaters, they're manipulators, they're slanderers, they're murderers, they're thieves. They lie in wait for the innocent. They conspire to swallow them up and to put them to death, to kill them. Because the righteous, the innocent, are the ones who are going to expose these people. If they entice you, you will become just like them. If you don't, if you don't consent there is a reward for you, but this is going to be challenging. It's going to be 10,000 against one in some cases. That's the amount of followers I had at the time. And it was just me fighting on the YouTube, 
to get the word out about what that ministry did to me behind closed doors. And a lot of people didn't believe me until later. And they still don't because there are people just like them on this Internet who are evil and wicked. They want to see danger and harm come upon the righteous. That's what Yahweh's word says. 13, we'll find all valuable wealth and we'll fill our houses with plunder. You shall cast your lot among us. We'll all have one purse. They're all going to bribe you, manipulate you and extort you so that if you decide to leave or you decide to expose them, they're going to expose you first. Don't do this thing. Walk in wisdom. Be discreet. Learn of Yahweh and he will help you to deal with as wise and as crafty as a serpent. My son, don't walk on the path with them. Keep your foot from their path, for their feet run to evil. They hurry to shed blood. We know that there is two paths. There is a path that is straight and narrow, and very few be that find it. And then there's a way that's broad, and there's several people who are on it who will be deceived all the way until judgment. That path, don't walk on it. Keep your foot far away from it. That path is dark. Nothing but darkness, sin, and torment. And it's full of evil. But the path of righteousness is light. It's straight. And there may be some obstacles there. But those obstacles are there to help you to endure like a person in training, like an athlete in training. They're there to help you to endure, to strengthen you in Yah's word, to make you strong in your faith so that you you do not waver, so that you can run away from evil and resist the devil. Verse 17, for the net is spread in vain in the sight of any bird, but these lay in wait for their own blood. They lurk secretly for their own lives. So are the ways of everyone who is greedy for gain. It takes away the life of its own owner. So I said that these leaders on this YouTube are greedy for gain. They're teaching you to sin. They're teaching you to transgress Yah's law. And they're teaching you iniquity if they're not giving you the perfect will of Yahweh, which is both in tandem with Torah and the New Testament, which is Yahweh Yehoshua's testimony. If they don't give you both, they are shedding blood. They are, look, they are lurking secretly to save their own lives, to put money in their own pockets, to sustain themselves in the time of trouble. They are heaping upon themselves the spoils of the poor, and they're putting it in their own houses. They're investing it in their own lands. They're taking your money as you are watching them on YouTube and they're doing what they want with it to secure themselves. Meanwhile, they're not giving you the true word of Yahweh that says to flee from the land of the Chaldees because they know the moment that you do, they're broke. They know that the moment that you leave, their time is up. So they're going to try everything and they're going to say everything in order to keep you to stay put, even if that means prophesying to you peace and prosperity and even if that means sending out people to make sure that you get off your path, to distract you, to entice you to do exactly what it is that they're doing. This type of thing takes away the life of themselves. Doing this thing is not going to save them in the time of trouble. This is not righteous. Yahweh will not leave the wicked unpunished. When they do this thing, they are becoming guilty of bloodshed their own blood, and yours. Let's continue. Wisdom calls aloud. Wisdom calls aloud in the street. She utters her voice in the public places. She calls at the head of noisy places. At the entrance of the city gates, she utters her words. The call to come out of, out of America, out of Babylon, has already been called aloud. It is a loud call. The true prophets of Yahweh are calling it. And when the wicked heard it, they believed it. And now they're distorting it. Now they are using it for profit and gain for themselves. We're going to go into that some more. It's exactly what's going on in Africa right now. In a noisy place, she's called. 
in Babylon, America, a place where you couldn't even, you can't, you, where you really can't even hear the real truth because there's so much noise in there. There's so many doctrines and so many false leaders distorting Yahweh's word. But nonetheless, she's still called out. And some of us heard it. Some of us heard it. How long, you simple ones, will you love simplicity? How long, you stupid ones? How long will you foolish ones? How long will you dull ones? How long will you gullible and naive ones love to be gullible and naive? I look in the comments section a lot in, in a lot of these live chats and a lot of these videos of these leaders, uh, Deborah Yah, T-E-O-T-W. I, I recognize the naivety of a lot of people. Like they are new. They are fresh and in coming into this knowledge. And it's disgusting how they're being taken advantage of by these false leaders, leaders for the sake of greedy gain. But that doesn't mean that they didn't hear the word of Yah. That's also another thing. I can't have pity on the comment section because at the end of the day, I really don't know whether or not they heard that wisdom called through the, through the message and they just ignored it. Yeah, yeah, we'll judge it. The only thing I can do is pray for those that are truly seeking Yahweh that they find it. And Yah will deal with the rest. Yes, it's called separation. It's called a division. It's called the wicked and it's called the righteous. It's called the wheat and the tear. None of us are all the same. But that has to be discerned through wisdom. How long will mockers delight themselves in mockery and fools hate knowledge? Yes, I know. This call to action is constantly mocked, constantly hated. When I posted these videos at the start a year ago on my music channel, I got so much pushback. So many mockers and scoffers came in. Where are you going to go? What are you going to do? Yahuwah or the Most High said he going to come get us here. There is no place that we could run. Babylon is everywhere. Where are you going to go? The curses are going to follow us wherever we go. Are you sure about that? Is that Yah's full judgment? Not so. That's not Yahweh's full judgment. Yes, we have heaped upon ourselves great sin, and that sin has great consequence. We're dealing also with a Elohim who is long-suffering and merciful, and he made a promise to our forefathers that there will be a righteous seed who will do the will of Yahweh, who will follow the shepherd wherever he goes, and will endure to the very end. But scoffers and mockers don't want to hear that. They just want to delight in their own mocking and their own scoffing. They think it's funny. They think they're smart. They think they're the ones who got the keys to the kingdom. They think they got all the knowledge and the wisdom and the understanding. But they're foolish. They're foolish in this because they hate knowledge. They hate that Yahweh has given knowledge to the simple. Yahweh says, I am speaking to a people full of foolishness. He said that my people perish because of lack of knowledge. That means that they hate it. Therefore, I will reject these people from what? From becoming priests, prophets, kings, called to my purpose. I will reject them. That means that he is calling a judgment on them. Let's go into this word, mockers. Another word for a mocker is a scoffer. Let's go into this word. Let's gain some understanding here. A scoffer and a mocker comes from the Hebrew word lutz. Lutz. And it means an ambassador. Have in derision an interpreter. Make a mock, a mocker. There are several ambassadors for wickedness out here in these YouTube streets. They were sent as Satan to thwart the righteous. They were sent as ambassadors. That means those who are going to speak on behalf of what? They think it's Yah. They think it's the Most High, but instead they're going to speak on behalf of their own conceit and their, of their own arrogance and of their own ambition and pride of their heart. And just like we read that the wicked will gather to themselves others like them, they're just trying to recruit others just like them. That means that the more that they speak, others will follow them and will speak with them. They will then become ambassadors for that same doctrine and that same ambition that that leader is now spitting off. And a lot of those people are stay in America. 
Yah says to, that he's going to come get us here. We don't need to pay for any passports. You have a leader and a teacher speaking that. You're going to end as a follower. You're going to end up speaking that as well. It's confusion that's begetting confusion, a ball of confusion. Everybody's confused, but not me, not I, not in this matter. To have in derision. Derision means mockery again. Also ridicule, jeering, scoffing, jibbing, taunts, disrespect, teasing. Somebody who's a mocker also teases. If somebody has knowledge and understanding of Yahweh's word and it's against what this mocker believes or has been taught, they're going to send that video to others to also tease and mock. Isn't that what happened, Mrs. Ma'am? You sent my video to a group chat and they disagreed with what I said. Y'all disagreed with what Yah said. And who the heck are we to disagree with what Yah said? If he says you, sh you should have terror and fright, especially in this last day, who are we to disagree that we shouldn't? That's what happens when we heap to ourselves leaders after our own itching ears and our own lust because these leaders are prophesying to you falsehoods. Peace, peace, safety, and prosperity. And it will not have you to act and to move, but to sit, to be complicit, to be lazy and entitled and be still. But Yahweh said, get out, come out of her, my people, save yourselves those of you who are in Babylon, because the wrath of Yahweh is kindled against her. And not only is he going to destroy that place, but every inhabitant on the inside of them. Why? Because of their abominations. Because they have committed abominations in Sion. Why would he say that to Babylon? Because there are those of you who are using this word and who believe it, but you're being taught and you're erroring in the scriptures. You think by your righteousness, you are saved in America. You think that all you have to do is feed the homeless, give to the poor and, and to the needy. Keep the seventh day and all will be well with you. Keep Yahweh's commandments. But there's no way you can keep Yahweh's commandments perfectly in America in a cesspool of demons and unclean spirits. No way. Somebody's lying. Like I said on this channel, you may be able to do it temporarily. Sit in America to prepare yourself to come out because just like in the time of the Exodus, Yahweh allowed them time to pack up and to leave, but they had to leave nonetheless. Why? Because Pharaoh was coming to bring the sword and kill all of them, all of you Israelites, those who claim that the Most High, Yahweh, Yahuwah, Yahweh, whatever name you're saying, those who are walking around saying this, Pharaoh's coming for you. You think that I'm disrespectful, but Yahweh is not a respecter of man. He will humble kings the same way he will humble the common person. Why would he humble them the same way? Because we're talking about pride and arrogance. Kings have the right to have pride and arrogance because they have money and they have power and they have authority. But what do we look like in America being as vulnerable as we can be walking around with the pride of identity. What do we look like? We look foolish. We're in the land that belongs to another nation, that belongs to another religion, that, be that belongs to another law. And that law is not Yahweh's. Even though they're using the Bible, we're in that land and we think that we're safe there when the go down goes down. You think that and you believe that. You think I'm angry. But have you seen the wrath of Yahweh? Have you heard about it? Let's talk about it. What happened in the time when the children of Israel were in the wilderness? And 10 times they tempted Yahweh. They spoke against what it was that he was trying to humble them to. We're going to go back to Egypt. We want the gar we want the garlic and we want the leeks. We want the onions. We want the, the meat that was in the pots. We were better there. Yahweh was like, oh, man. Moshe, go get him. We're going to make a golden calf and we're going to call it the one who brought us out of Egypt. Oh, Moshe, go get him. We're not going to keep the seventh day holy. We're going to gather sticks. Who cares? I'm cold. Moshe, go get him. I'm tired of eating this manna. 
I'm so sick of this manna. Yahweh brought quail and he was, and his anger was kindled against them because they were fat, full of gluttony and full of themselves, only wanting what would satisfy their belly. That's the comfort of Babylon, right? Those of you who has, who have houses, who have cars, who have money, that is your idol. That is your strength. That is your comfort. You don't even know yourself without that, especially right now. You don't even realize how much of a stronghold those things are, especially in the time of darkness. Yahweh said that it is harder for a rich man to inherit the kingdom. Why? Because they're full of covetousness. They're full of pride. They are reaping the benefits of their money. But you can use that money to do good, to give to those who don't have so they can come out and obey the word of Yahweh. But this person won't. They're a widow themselves. Why do they need to help anybody else? That's fine. Keep your money. You think you can boast against Yahweh and tell him what righteousness you've done and call him unfair. But didn't he say in that time when they come to me and they say, but Yahweh, Yah Yehoshua, but I gave to you, I prophesied in your name. I commanded demons to come out of people in your name. What does Yehoshua say? Get away from me. I don't know you. What? Why would he say that? is because there is a form of righteousness that's happening and an understanding of the scriptures that's happening that is against the perfect will of Yahweh. I already threw the whole comment away the moment that this person said that these lands are not the true Jerusalem. Throw the whole thing away. That's, that's all the rhetoric that's being called up on this YouTube and it's deception. Y'all are being steered away from the place of security. Yahweh talked about those who are going to go to Africa. Yahweh talked about those who will not come into this land. He calls them rebels and evil because they have stiff, stiff necks and they're rebellious and they're stubborn and they want to do what they want to do. As y'all called us to come out of Babylon and come into these lands, you have the stubborn who's saying, I'll come out, but I'll come out and go where I want to go. Okay, that's fine. You can do that. Prepare for Yahweh's wrath when it's time. And so I have no dog in this fight whatsoever. But by the time I hear that somebody is sending my videos to a group of their friends and their family and they are scrutinizing it and they're sneering at it and they're mocking it, I'm clear what's happening. Y'all have been taught falsehood and you're pricked by the words of Yah that is telling you straightly what we need to do. And so let Yahweh gather, gather everybody together. Let Yahweh, that's what he said. He said, I will gather up the wicked together and I will destroy them all together. Because all of y'all are going to gather together with the same mind, with the same doctrine, with the same understanding. And it's mockery. Proverbs 9 and 12, if thou scornest, thou alone shall bear it. Anybody who mocks and scoffs at Yahweh's word, they alone will bear that shame. You try to put shame on me and you try to insult me. But it's okay. I'll be insulted. I'll be made ashamed by your measure of holiness. But I will not be ashamed for speaking the word of Yahweh rightly to my brothers and my sisters. That means giving them the judgment of Yahweh first before mercy. That's how, that's how the scripture says. It says, first give them judgment. Then the, the mercy comes. And then their faith is perfected. I'm here to give you the judgment of Yahweh that if you don't come out of America, you're going to be slaughtered or you're going to run out as refugees. The mercy of Yahweh says if you get out beforehand, you won't have to endure that. You won't have to be there. Now you will see it. That's what Yahweh said. You will see it. That's why this mass exodus will not be kept secret. Because as people are putting on the YouTube and they're chronicling their exit and they're coming out for gain's sake, for gain's sake. That's how not only the nations will see what it is that we're doing, but that's also how we on this side will see the destruction of our people. That's how we will see the siege. That's how we will see what's going on with our people. It's going to be blasted all over the internet. But yeah, I was doing it. He said, I told you, I told you. A scorner is proud and haughty. Yes, they walk around stiff-necked, and arrogant, and they delight in their scorning. 
They wear it proudly. They are incapable of discipline. Let's talk about our elders, because Yahweh talks about in Ezekiel how the elders will come to him and will inquire of him. But he said, but will I be inquired of them? Will they actually ask me a question and receive the answer? No, they're full of abominations. Our elders are leaders and the older ones who are leading this so-called awakening. They're full of abominations. They've had a life full of sin. And they think just because they've come into the knowledge of the truth of who they are as far as identity, and they're doing some of the commandments, that they're saved, that they're righteous, that they're holy. Not so. Not so. Yahweh says that my people transgressed my law. They've made it to not. They've embarrassed me through their actions. Shall I be known by them? Are they really going to glorify me? Have they glorified me? No. No, they haven't, especially these leaders. They are sifting the people and heaping up to themselves money and followers, but they're not giving you all anything to prepare you for what's coming. They cannot find wisdom. They are an abomination. That's what Yahweh said. Everything that they say and do is is an abomination. Scorners and mockers. There's no light in them. There's no truth in them. And they should be avoided. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to finish this out as I have recorded, previously recorded the latter part of this video. I'm going to finish this out. And this is going to be the last time that I address Mrs. Ma'am. I will put up a scoffer alert and I will continue this Q&A series with the questions in the queue from my brothers and sisters who are sincerely leaving America per the commandment to come out of America. I will further unpack scriptures and prophecies as Yahweh has given them through Nabi Asibaya for us to put the fear of Yahweh on this return. And so that's my discretion in this matter. I am going to avoid this mocker and this scoffer. They will be smitten and punished for the benefit of the simple, banished for the removal of contention. Mockers and scoffers are held in contempt of Yahweh's judgment, and it's because it is prepared for them. When we speak Yahweh's word, especially the judgment of Yahweh, the wicked know exactly who they are. When they hear the judgment of Yahweh, they believe it, but they don't want to receive it. They want you to be wrong and they want Yahweh to be wrong. And so they become emboldened through their falsehoods. They will become comforted in their riches. They will be comforted in their so-called good works. And they will walk around still in blindness and in lameness. But they heard the word of Yah. Y'all heard it, and to that you will bear it. An interpreter, these are also false prophets who will interpret to you the, the scriptures the way that they see fit. They will use scriptures and twist it like they're twisting the arm of Yahweh, Yah, Yehoshua. He's the one that gave the commandment straight from the beginning. Moses, tell Pharaoh to let my people go. But it took Pharaoh 10 times 10 stubbornnesses, 10 idols in his heart, the full completion and arrogance of his heart. It took 10 times for him to finally relent. And even after that, he was too prideful and too arrogant to be defeated and to take the L. That's a scoffer and a mocker, an interpreter. Also to make mock and a mocker. A primitive root properly to make mouths at. This is someone who wants to argue. This is someone who wants to debate and it's useless. They don't want an answer. They just want to make mouths at what it is that you're saying by Yah's word. They want to scoff. (laughs) Oh my goodness. Shaking my head. Are you for real? And really they're calling you a liar. They're calling Yah through you, as I have interpreted the word rightly, they're calling Yah a liar. They're scoffing and they're mocking Yahweh from the effort to pronounce a foreign language. That means that there's confusion. No one understands. This also means that the way that they're speaking is very childish. You know, when a kid is mocking another kid, That's also another form of mocking and scoffing. But there's an effort put forward. There's an effort put forward to speak a language that they can't even interpret and can't understand. There's an effort 
to interpret Yah's word, but they can't. It's confusion to them. So when it's said out loud, like the comment, when they say it out loud, it's foreign. I'm reading it and I'm like, that's not what it says. That's not what it means. You're reading it wrong. But they are putting forth an effort. Has anybody tried to learn a language, a new language? Huh. I know Arabic is very difficult to learn. And if you are not careful, the, uh, the locals, as you are trying to pronounce their words, they will take it as mocking unless you show a disposition that you apologize. I'm sorry, I'm learning. This is, an, this is new to me. You know, I'm trying to learn the Arabic language, but my tongue just can't form it. And then they'll dismiss it and say, no problem. They won't take offense to it. But it is a very offensive thing for a mocker and a scoffer to put effort interpreting the scriptures. It's offensive. This is meant to be offensive. Mockers and scoffers say things to offend, to interpret or generally intercede. Ambassador, have in derision, interpreter, make a mock, mocker, scorner, scornful, and a teacher. So then I'll say this. A lot of these mockers and scoffers, especially on this YouTube, as a comment section is open, everybody feels like they're a teacher. Everybody believes that they have the truth and they can just come in anybody's comment section and just start spitting off and interpreting scripture and interceding, cutting you off interpreting they're causing a confusion where there is no confusion this channel is for those who believe in the message that they've already heard and they're making their provisions the followers of this channel already have a teacher i'm here as a sister trying my best to fulfill the commandment of the of the law that says to love thy brother as yourself because i would want somebody to do this very thing for me and i did i had that when I was in the States, I had a whole community of people who were in the land and not yet in the land who were there. I could pick up the phone and say, hey, what do I do with this visa? I had people like that. And in this walk, unfortunately, there are not a lot of people out here. What they're doing is they're charging you for a consultation. For an hour consultation, they are charging $200, $300 just to tell you what it is that I'm telling you for free. No charge. Just subscribe, like the video and enable notifications so that I can give you more. That's my service to the family. A lot of these teachers and their followers who are sending themselves out as teachers are false. They're scoffers of Yahweh's word. How do we know this? Well, Isaiah says to the law and to the testimony, meaning to the Torah, and to the prophets, if they speak not according to this word, it is because there is no light in them. If they speak not according to Yahweh's word, his Torah, his commandments, his law, and the testimony through the prophets hollering to come out of America, there is no light in them. They are false. They are leading you to hell. And so, uh, Miss Ma'am, Mrs. Ma'am, who came into my comments, are you a teacher? If you're not speaking according to the law and the testimony, there is no light in you. If you're speaking any other doctrine or any other teaching outside of what Yahweh has ordained through his law and his prophets and the testimony of Yehoshua that's included, you are a false teacher. You are a mocking teacher. You are a scoffing teacher. You are a false ambassador. You are a false prophet. Did I say that? No, I said what Yahweh said. And his words stand firm and true, even in this video. Let's go back. Verse 22. How long, you simple ones, will you love simplicity? How long will mockers delight themselves in mockery and fools hate knowledge. They hate knowledge. Don't be someone who hates knowledge. Don't be someone who hates the knowledge of Yahweh, which is wisdom, which comes first when you have fear of Yahweh. Don't hate it. Yah is going to make a fool out of you. But there is some who delight themselves in it. They love it. It boosts their ego and their pride, and it makes them feel like they've accomplished something. Meanwhile, they're still in Babylon. They don't believe 
And they don't want anybody who believes to receive the instructions. 23, turn at my reproof. Behold, I will pour out my spirit on you. I will make known my words. This is the promise of the Holy Spirit. No way do you have the Holy Spirit in America. I've said it before. Reprove is rebuke. Turn at my rebuke. Listen to it. It's good for you. It'll become wisdom and instruction to you. It'll give you prudence, craftiness. It'll help you to deal wisely in righteousness and justice and inequity. Take my rebukes. That's what I've done. I've taken the rebukes and judgments that Yahweh has had for me when I was wrong, when I've done something wicked, evil in my past or even in my present. I may stumble here and there, but I don't have any issues with apologizing where I've stumbled. And that's supposed to help me to not do that thing again. That's supposed to help me to increase in my learning and be knowledgeable next time. There's, it's called mistakes. Turn at my reproof, my rebuke, my chastisement, at my striking. And that's using Yah's word. Behold, I will pour out my spirit on you. I will make known my words to you. Yes, he will. I am a testimony to that because I have called. Yes, Yahweh did. He has called us all to return to him and to repent. But there's several, the mockers, the scoffers, the simple, the hateful, the foolish, who have refused this call. They're all over YouTube. They're all over in real life. But will that stop you, oh, you faithful, from keeping Yahweh's word? I have stretched out my hand and no one has paid attention. So here goes this stretched out hand again. What does that mean? This stretched out hand is judgment. This stretched out hand is trying to grab the collar of our shirt and pull us from destruction. But the rebellious, when they get pulled from a possible destruction, they go right back to it. They get mad at Yah for pulling their shirt collar. They roll their eyes and they mock. And they don't pay attention to what that stretched out arm was supposed to do. They refuse that correction. They don't pay attention to it. They mock it. They scoff at it. They roll their eyes at it. But you have ignored all my counsel and wanted none of my reproof. Counsel is important in this walk. It's very important. And counsel comes from wisdom. And wisdom comes from the fear of Yah. I have counsel. I've been in these lands for almost three years. I've seen a lot. Some of the things I probably won't even say on YouTube. But at the end of the day, there's an answer for every question, possibly. And then there's also wisdom and discernment on how to answer those questions, especially on the internet. But the mockers and the scoffers, they don't want any of Yahweh's rebuke, his reprovement, his judgment, his counsel. So he says in 26, I also will laugh at your disaster. I will mock when calamity overtakes you. What? Yahweh will do this thing? Yeah, why not? You did it to him. You continue to mock and scoff him and hate him. He's been trying to pull you out of Gehenna. He's been trying to pull you out of the foolishness of your own actions and your own speech. And every time you've ignored it, you like, like who's a parent? I'm a parent. And I know what it looks like if I keep saying something over and over and over again. Hey, don't jump off that couch. My daughter was three years old. She used to love doing that. Hey, stop jumping off that couch. Stop jumping off that couch until eventually I pulled her off before she jumped off. But one day when I wasn't looking, when I wasn't paying attention, she jumped off and she fell and hurt herself. Now, I was sad. <laughs> My little baby just got hurt. But I told her, I said, I told you, you don't listen. Next time you'll, you'll listen, right? Yes. She was a lot careful after that. But as we get older and we continue to walk around in that foolishness and we continue to mock instruction and judgment and, and the instruction of our father and our mother 
eventually it's going to be like, huh, you deserved it. That's what you get. Yahweh says, I will also laugh at your disaster. Yes, disaster is coming. And Yahweh won't feel any bit remorse because he's tried to tell you, even through this channel, to come out of America. It is about to fall. But those who mock, he said, I will mock when calamity overtakes you. When calamity overtakes you like a storm. When your disaster comes on like a whirlwind. When distress and anguish come on you. This is a war. This is a siege. This is a slaughter. 28, then they will call on me. Hmm. Isn't that funny? How when Yah warns and the mockers and those who are just foolish and prideful and think they think they know it all. I mean, that's a teenager all day, right? Isn't it funny how when everything our parents have told us will happen, ends up happening? Who's the first one we call? We try to call him, mom, dad. What, what, this happened to me and they listen they listen mm-hmm mm-hmm but your whole life they've been trying to train you in the right way your whole life they've been trying to correct your behavior but what is it called when a kid or a teenager continues in disobedience of their parents it's called rebellion Yahweh won't answer rebellion even if you call him Yahweh says, my name is a fortress and the righteous, they run to it. So if they run to it, that means that Yahweh opens his arms and he receives them like a dove who opens up her wings and he covers his chicks with the shadow of his wings. But when the rebellious run to that very name and they try to get under its protection, is he going to open the door? No way. Do you remember the parable of the 10 virgins? Read that. Take a look at that. They will seek me diligently, but they will not find me. Seek Yahweh while he may be found. Call on him while he is near. Fear him. Tremble at his words. Don't mock it. Because they hated knowledge yet again and didn't choose the fear of Yahweh. We all have a choice. None of us are victim. The poor prisoners, the elderly, the disabled, none of us are victim. We have done a lot of sin in this world. And when we hear the word, Yahweh says, choose today whom you will serve. You're either going to serve me or you're going to serve mammon. You're either going to serve Yahweh or you're going to serve Baal. Which one is it? We have a choice. The people on this channel who are following and watching and preparing, they've made that choice, not just through what I'm saying, but first fear of his word, the way that they got it. It's supposed to put fear in you to get you to move and to get you to pay attention to what Yahweh is telling you in a noisy place. They wanted none of my counsel. They despised all of my rep reproof. They hated it. They scoffed at it. They mocked at it. Therefore, they will eat of the fruit of their own way and be filled with their own schemes. You reap what you sow. For the backsliding of the simple will kill them for the rebellion, for the disobedience, for the hatred of Yah's Torah. Yah says it will kill you as simple as you think. I'm not going to pay for a passport. I'm just going to stay here. There's no need to pay for a passport. OK, as simple as that sounds, it may be the very thing that causes your destruction. The fact that you didn't get one. The fact that you didn't take the wisdom and the counsel to put in your passport application now, allow that process to go forward and get it. As simple as that instruction is, is as simple as that instruction can kill you. The careless ease of fools will destroy them. I'm okay. I'm okay here. I don't have to go anywhere. Yeah, I heard that in Africa, they're kicking out African-Americans. Yeah, I heard when you go to Jordan, you go to other places, you got to exit every three months. Yeah, I heard that there's some people who don't have money. I heard this and I heard that. I heard this. Meanwhile, you can't even consider that these people are rebellious. Yeah, I never said to go to Africa, but he said you will. Yeah, I said that there will be 
persecution and opposition when we come out. To paint pictures with black and white paint is simple. It's a simple minded thought. But every situation is different and every person's portion of repentance is according to their faith. But be at ease, you fools. Now I'm calling you a fool. Be at ease because you're being careless. Everybody knows that in in emergency situations, you want to make sure you have a few things, your ID, your wallet, your phone, your keys and money. That's for any situation. Now, if I'm saying that America is going down, as Yahweh has said, then what are the essentials that you need to do? Get your passport, get your fares in order, have a savings account, start putting money in it, even if it's five, ten dollars a month. And be ready. That is taking care of you, taking care of your soul, taking care to do what Yahweh has called you to do, taking care of your responsibilities. Don't be careless. Because when you when you set into that carelessness. It's an ease that's on your soul that you've put on and it's false. It's false. It's not real. It's foolish. And that very careless ease will destroy you. But whoever listens to me will dwell securely and will be at ease without fear of harm. I've been out of America for three years. I don't have to worry about right now what's going on in America because I'm not there. It doesn't affect me in the, in the same way that it, fe- it affects those who are in it. And I know that there are several levels to this, to this return that Yahweh has yet to put in action. I know by Yah's word what to look for because I've listened. I've heard it. Yahweh has prophecies for everything and he has wisdom for every situation. Now he has all the answers. But it's by my obedience and my faith that I can receive those answers. I don't know everything. But I am secure in Yah's word of what he said. And so I won't be afraid of it, even even as they happen. I'm just going to be prepared and ready. And with that, Yahweh will put me at ease. And let's say harm harm does come to me. Then that's my portion. According to my faith, that's how Yah is going to work out. And perfect on the inside of me what he's trying to get out. What, whatever that is. What, if it be sin or let's say if it be a virtue. This walk is going to refine us in whichever fa- way or fashion the potter sees fit. Perfect love casts out all fear. If you have perfect love in Yahweh and you're doing according to his commandments, there's nothing to fear. But we should indeed fear Yahweh just in case we backslide. Just in case we refuse and just in case we don't pay attention. We got to stay alert. We got to stay vigilant on this walk. And so that's what I have for you. Let us continue with the rest of this lesson as I unpack the comment section of my latest video and point out to you how to spot a mocker and a scoffer and how to deal with it with Yahweh's Torah through his judgments and with the walk and the faith of Yah Yehoshua. Let's continue. So I'm going to read SMH. This is an exclamation point to anybody who doesn't know. That's shaking my head. So this person is shaking their head hard. Obviously in disagreement. Obviously in disapproval. Right? Shaking my head. Sis, we don't have to pay our own way out of captivity. Another exclamation point. Does this person sound happy? Does this person sound like they're trying to reason? Does this person sound like they're giving a sincere question? They're yelling at me. And so what's the question? Then she goes on to give me scriptures. Jeremiah 16, Genesis 15, Hosea 2, Isaiah 11, Ezekiel 20, Revelation 12, Isaiah 60. Listen, in real life, and this is the issue also with this social media, is people think that they can talk to people any kind of way. They think just because it's the, this is the comment board that there are no social rules, that anybody could just come in and say whatever they feel and say it in whichever fashion they want to say it. Because we're all teachers, right? Because we're all Israel, right? Because we're all prophets, right? Everybody should be listened to, right? Wrong. Wrong. Never would this even happen in real life. In a face-to-face conversation, nobody could ever do this without being cut off. 
no one could ever say this without saying, hold on, hold on, wait a minute. Whoa, 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 whoa. you're coming to me. You're asking me a question. What's happening? Why, why are you spewing scriptures? What's your question? She goes on to say, I have money to leave, but what about our poor Israelites and our people in prison? So you have money to leave, right? That's your declaration. You have money to leave. So where are you at? You're still in America. You haven't left yet. This channel is about those who have heard the message, who believe the report, and who are coming out of America. So you have money to leave. Then you should be able to leave. Meanwhile, I have brothers and sisters on this channel who are struggling, who believe in the report, and but are saying, I can't get a passport for my child for whatever reason. But me being here to provide information and also encouragement, I am here to speak the word of Yahweh, and I am here to give a sincere report about what's going on here in the land. That's my role here. But you have money, right? And then there's a question. This is, here goes the question. Here goes the question. But what about our poor Israelites and our people in prison? I have referenced my sister from Meat No Milk Ministry. She has a video, how will the poor get out? But I also want to put on the table that just because somebody is poor doesn't mean they're righteous. Uh, we're going to get into that. And all Israel is not Israel. So you, so you have two questions. You're concerned, right? You're concerned. I'll, I'll take it. I'll take it as that. You're concerned that there's poor Israelites and people in prison who can't make it out. All right. So let's talk about those who are in prison. Again, all Israelites are not innocent. And so if somebody is in prison, there's a reason why they're there. More than likely, it's because of a crime that was committed that they now have to pay their time for, whether it be misdemeanors, whether it be felonies, whatever have you, we are in the land of the living and there is laws and everybody has to adhere to those laws. And when you break laws, you have to pay the time. You have to pay the cost, whether that be fines, whether that be community service, whether that be probation, whether that be going to jail. Either way, that is an extension that you did something that you weren't supposed to do. So let's put this now in a, in a proper question so that the answer can be given straightly. But what about our righteous, poor Israelites? Yahweh says he will not suffer the righteous to perish. No, the same way that Abraham petitioned and begged Yahweh, the angel who visited him and said, Yahweh, you're going to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah, but if there are 10 righteous in there, will you sweep away the wicked with the righteous? And he said, no. For the sake of those 10, I will save that place. And we know the story. Yahweh went into Sodom and Gomorrah and got Lot, Abraham's nephew, and who we thought was his family, who we thought because Lot was righteous, right? His, his daughters and his wife, Yah, told, go up to the mountain, keep walking, and don't turn back because I'm going to destroy this place. Not only did Yahweh say, if I see that this place is wicked, then I will utterly destroy it. But for the sake of that 10, is he going to save the place? No, he's going to save those people. And eventually, we know the story, Lot's wife ended up turning back because she didn't receive that that place was wicked. She longed to still be there. Her heart was there and was not in righteousness. And so she was puffed up into a pillar of salt. And then we can later on read that Lot's daughters were utterly confused. Let's put into context here. The Yahweh that I serve, not only is he a giver of life, but he's also a destroyer. And he enacts his judgments through authorities, police, probation officers, judges, bailiffs, lawyers, all belong to him. They're subject to him. They are, as the judicial system, enacting Yahweh's judgments upon those who are lawless and disobedient. In the same way, Yahweh will not suffer any poor, righteous Israelite to not come out of America. And so I'm here to provide to you all who are striving through faith, because Yah needs our faith in order to, to bring a lot of what he's saying to pass. He needs our faith to obey his word, basically saying, believe what I said 
And if you can't see it now, just do what I'm telling you to do, and then you will see it later. I am a testimony to that. Not to mention, y'all think I'm rich? Music is my livelihood, but I also struggle. And so to the definition, us who are here in the, in the ministry, us who are here, who are gathered out, we are all at the bottom. We are helping one another. We are putting our resources together and making sure everybody has according to their needs. We have poor Israelites here. What are we talking about? What's the difference between righteousness and wickedness, though? This sister goes on to say, the Most High said, no one will redeem us from our captivity. Is that true? We're going to go into scripture on that. Flee to go where in Africa? So I already recognize that off of all of these questions, this person is not familiar with this channel. There is a patience that I have with this. However, this person is already speaking as if they have the answers to their questions. So I'm clear. I'm clear really who I'm talking to at this point. It's not, it's not a personal thing. I'm clear that this person is arrogant and I'm clear that this person does not know who Yahweh is. This person goes on to say, the whole world will see our mass exodus. It will not be a well-kept secret. Isaiah 60, Jeremiah 16. By the time you have that, you, you, you already have your answer. You already, you already know the way. What am I answering? I went on to answer this, not for this person, but for those who may be reading. So I went on to answer this. What an evil and arrogant thing to speak against the righteous judgment of Yahweh Almighty. And I mean arrogant because this person is saying that they don't need to pay their way out of captivity, that they have money, so but they're not going to come out and flee where flee to go where? I mean, this is just arrogant speech. If, who can't see that? But you have, have, you have to have the discernment and you have to have the knowledge of Torah to be able to call that. And I'm going to explain my position and I'm not backing down from it. I said what Yahweh said. You sound like those who released a guilty murderer from jail instead of exonerating he who was indeed blameless. Why would I say this? The way that this person is phrasing their questions. They're asking me, what about the people who are in prison? Like I said, all Israel is not Israel. But this person is suggesting that all Black people who are in prison don't belong there, and they too are involved in the second exodus. That is a doctrine of the devil. It is hatred to Yahweh and his, and his commandments and his judgment, and it's doing the same thing that the wicked of our forefathers did in putting to death our Messiah, who was blameless and guiltless. And that's what Yahweh said. That's what Yehoshua said, that you will be exposed in the latter times, to be the offspring of your forefathers who killed Messiah. I, I said that. These kinds of people will be exposed through their speech alone, through their questions alone. And that's why I put the disclaimer up there. Through the discretion and discernment and wisdom of Torah, will I answer your questions accordingly. That's Yahweh's word. That's how I am called to create this channel to give you the information and to answer your questions. Yahushua didn't answer every single question that was given to him. Like, what Bible are y'all reading? You don't know that the Pharisees tested Yahushua constantly? And if he answered them the way that they were looking for him to answer, you don't think they would have continued to scrutinize it and they would continue to twist it and continue to falsely accuse him? And that's what's happening here. We'll go into it. Yes, you sound like those who released a guilty murderer from jail instead of exonerating he who is indeed blameless. Yehoshua is calling a remnant to himself. But what keeps happening is rebellious Israel, wicked Israel, disobedient Israel keeps killing the prophets. They keep killing those who were sent to warn and to also give the good news that if you repent, and if you come out, and if you do it in sincerity and faith, it's going to be a long walk, but the end is worth it. We can see that. We can read that throughout scriptures. And so am, am I doing something wicked here? Is this person telling me that I'm teaching heresy? I know by whose spirit I speak by. This YouTube stuff is only, is only a pinch of the persecution. There's persecution going on over here. 
And I'm, I'm not, I'm not painting a picture of flowery roses. I'm just doing my best to encourage you along the way as I share in doses what to expect when you come out, the persecution you may come to. But that means that I have to give you the wisdom on how to act and how to behave. It's the same thing that happened during the time of the disciples. He gave them their marching orders that it was going to be tough. But through his name and by his Holy Spirit, they will be successful. They will convert people unto Yahweh, not unto me, and will glorify Yahweh in heaven. So I went on to quote Leviticus 19 and 15. You shall do no injustice in court. You shall not be partial to the poor or defer to the great, but in righteousness shall you judge your neighbor. That's the answer to her question about poor Israelites and people in prison. One would have to judge whether they are righteous. And if they're not righteous, I am not supposed to be partial with those who are poor. Neither am I supposed to pity anybody to the point of not giving them their right judgment. Anybody who's in jail deserves it. And anybody who doesn't deserve it, more than likely there was something along their path that they got away with and yeah, caught it. Nobody gets away with anything. I can think of me being a child and when I broke something and I probably got away with it then, I broke something again and I probably got away with it then. And then I keep breaking something until eventually that's going to catch up with me. And if there's a righteous judge there to judge my disposition about that broken thing, that righteous judge is going to see, oh no, this is not the first time you broke something. And even though it may have been an accident, your disposition is showing to me that there's some pride and arrogance in you that will not have you to apologize. And so not only will I be judged for that thing that I broke, that that judge brought on the table, but more than likely every other thing that I broke, everything has to be repaid. That's Torah. And if we claim to be Israel, and if we claim to be walk, coming back to the covenant of Yahweh, Yahweh says, I will bring you back together in comfort, but not all together unpunished. In this walk, in this return, he will bring us out of the lands with our passports. He will make sure we're on the plane. He will make sure we have our luggage. But that doesn't mean that there's going to be, there's not going to be discrepancies. That doesn't mean that our bags aren't going to be lost. That doesn't mean that there's going to be somebody sitting next to us who's funky. Therefore, our whole 20 hour flight is funky. Yes, it's comfort, but it's not altogether unpunished. There is something in our behavior, in our attitude, in our mentality, in our entitlement that Yah is trying to get to. And so he's trying to see where you are. How are you going to handle your bags being lost in transit? Are you going to go off on the stewardess? Are you going to go off on baggage claim? Are you going to be patient? Are you going to wait and see how this thing pans out? Or are you going to be anxious and fearful and just full of turmoil because, oh my goodness, your stuff is lost? None of that stuff really matters to the core of how Yah is trying to turn our hearts back to him. That's Yah showing us our hearts and the things we need to deal with. And so I am not one who is going to be impartial to anyone, poor or in prison, old, rich, it doesn't matter. Yahweh says we're not supposed to be impartial in judgment. And if you think that this is not a judgment situation, I would say think again. This person is basically telling me, you're missing some points. You need to read this. Basically insinuating that I'm teaching you all falsehood. But I would go also far as to say, as this person has been taught falsehood. Nowhere in Yah's word does he say all his people are innocent. That's what Yahweh said. Actually, he echoes the opposite especially in those chapters you referenced. I took a look at the chapters. I'm not above correction, but just about 98% of them is saying exactly what it is that I've been saying in this whole entire series. I just haven't gotten down to the details of it because Nabia Sibaya already taught it. I go on to say, since you have money as you boast, because that's what it sounded like to me, it sounded like a boast. I have money to leave, but what about our poor Israelites and our people in prison? Why? Like, why even ask any question about anybody else? Deliver yourself. Get your passport, get your affairs in order, and you leave, and then you can worry about poor Israelites and people in prison. It's such a condescending 
statement. It is arrogant and it is boasting. Sponsor a widow or the fatherless who can't support themselves to leave. Yes, if you indeed have money and you can indeed leave, you should sponsor someone. There are several widows out here who can't provide for themselves to leave, but that doesn't mean that there's not old or elderly people here. There are elderly people here doing the work of repentance, rehearsing the acts of righteousness, and have obeyed the commandment of Yahweh all the way from almost 80 years old, who are here. Widows who are here. Fatherless, I have a daughter who is without her father. She's here with me because of my obedience. The poor and the disabled. There are disabled people here in the land right now who have obeyed the word of Yahweh. Hallelujah. If somebody has money to leave, why, why don't they leave? It's because they have heaped up on themselves teachers and falsehoods to keep them in America. This person probably has a house, probably has real estate, probably has, you know, investments. And listen, this is not personal. I don't even need to know about this person's whole entire life. I don't need to know it. But what I do know is that there are doctrines out there, like a Deborah Yah, someone who is teaching to get a plot of land. But Yah speaks against those false prophets teaching you all to get a plot of land. And he's calling it wickedness because Babylon is not a place that Yahweh is calling us to stay in. He's calling us to come out. And, and something like a house, a car, assets, things like that, that'll keep you in America is a form of idol worship, especially if you don't let go of those things and leave. There's some elderly people here. There's some adults here who have had a house, who sold it upon their own judgment and discretion, hearing the word about what it is that they needed to do. They took it and reasoned it upon themselves that they needed to sell their house. And they did so that they wouldn't be guilty with the sins of Babylon, which teaches you to get your piece of the pie. That's the truth. That's Yahweh's word. That's not my word. That's not, those are not my words. And so please, that's a general uh, assumption that I'm making. I'm not accusing this person. I'm, I'm expounding on an idea. At the end of the day, this is how you also discern because there, there, there are several people who come across this channel and have come across my music channel. And it's the same questions. It's the same thing. And I don't mind answering them because some people have different spirits about themselves. But there's these types of questions that I can perceive. I can discern that there's something there that's evil. And I got to judge it. I got to call it. Like, I got to speak to it. I'm not speaking around it. I can't speak around it. I'm not trying to have long-winded conversations in the comments box. So I go on to say, otherwise, you're a rebel. Like I said, Yahweh said, yes, I said it. Anybody who doesn't want to pay for pay to leave, who doesn't want to get their passport, doesn't want to pay their debts in order to leave, because in the event that you have debts, you probably can't get your passport. If you don't want to pay that off to leave, you're a rebel. You are rebelling against the commandment of Yahweh to pay customs to whom customs is due, to pay Caesar the taxes that he's due. You're in rebellion. So lastly, I said, Yehoshua redeemed out of bondage those who are obedient and everyone who will not obey his instructions will run out as refugees or be destroyed in the slaughter. Boom. At the end of the day, that'll prick anybody who has been told peace, peace, or who has been told, no, just get land, or who has been told you don't have to leave, or who has been told you don't have to pay to leave. No, just stay here. Just stay put. That would prick anybody. <laughs> it could prick me when I first heard it. But that's Yahweh's word. Yes, you will run out as refugees or be destroyed in the slaughter. We'll get into it. His word stands faithful and true. That's Yah's word. You can stand on them. And that's the word that I'm standing on. Sion shall be redeemed with justice and her returned with righteousness. That's Isaiah 1, by the way, verse 27. I want to correct that. That's Isaiah 1, verse 27. And I wanted to finish this, this comment off because, I'm, like I said, I'm not going back and forth with anybody who already feels like they have the answers to their so-called questions. And so my last one was, as far as the answers to your other questions, you're either new to the channel, which is neither here nor there. You're new to the channel, 
you should continue to watch the content before you ask questions because more than likely I probably answered them already or you're stopped up with bitterness and falsehoods. That's straight up. And that I had to call that because all of that, what about the poor Israelites and the people in prison? You sound bitter. It sounds like you're holding Yah's judgment as unfair. No, Yah's, Yah's judgments are fair. They're righteous. There's no darkness in it. That's his word. That is the very word that created the heavens and the earth. That's the very word that placed the, the luminaries and the firmament. And that's the very word that created Adam and Eve, you and me. Who are we? to buck up against Yah's judgments? Who are we to say that he's evil? Or who are we to say that he's unfair? Like what did Jeremiah say? Who is the clay to tell the potter how to fashion it, how to shape it? That's It's arrogant. It's arrogance. So I said at the end of that, repent from your evil speech and seek righteousness. All you rebels. Am I just talking to this person? No. I'm talking to anybody who could be hearing this or could be reading this. And that's how Yah's word is written. So if you are pricked, if you feel now judged, if you feel now angry and upset at my words, that's Yah's words against your rebellion and against your wickedness. Oh, I felt that same thing when I when I came into this walk. Oh, man, it was tough. I didn't know which way was up or down. But the moment Yah grabbed me by his judgments and had me and, and had me to look in the mirror, I had to confess and repent that he is true and he is righteous. And there is none beside him who is right but Yahweh Yah Yehoshua. And so a lot of us are deceived by the wickedness of our hearts. I would be doing a disservice to the balance that Yahweh is saying, all of Israel has transgressed against me and has sinned against me. But there is a remnant. There is a remnant who will come out and will serve Yahweh in sincerity and truth. And that's what my desire is, not only for myself, but for those of you who are preparing your exodus. And so, yes, falsehoods. There's several falsehoods on the internet right now. Where Jerusalem is? Where is our land? Who are the real Jews? When does a day start? When is Shabbat? I mean, it's and it's a lot of it is just very silly and trivial. However, it is causing a lot of our people to err in the scriptures and it's causing a lot of us to stumble. And that's why I shared in the last video that John the Baptist was was set out to give the call to repentance, to show the people the blood on their face and to give them Torah to tell them that we're all guilty and in order for Yah Yehoshua to forgive you and to accept you, you must make the paths in your heart straight for him to walk and come in. Do away with all of all of our idols in our hearts, all of our ambitions, all of the, the, the money, all of the, just all of the things of this world. It doesn't compare to the cost of our soul. And I just want to say hallelujah to that because I am one out of several people here who are striving for righteousness and who are doing our best to walk it out in perfection. It is possible, but this walk is not for the faint heart, neither is it for the feeble need. We have a work to do. It's an uphill battle. That's how far gone we are from Yahweh's commandments, but he's there. And we must have the fear of Yahweh in order to be imparted wisdom and understanding. And so, yes, repent from your evil speech and seek righteousness. That's for all of us, but more specifically for the rebels, because they're coming into these lands and they're causing a ruckus. As I shared in my video, a warning to BHIs, they're, at, they're, they're causing a ruckus. They look righteous, but they're very prideful. They're walking around arrogantly. And it is a to their detriment because they are saying that they are the children and that their father is the most high or Yahuwah or Yahweh. And the, the, the nations hearing that are like, who is that? And they're looking it up and they're seeing who it is that y'all worship. And you're making yourself guilty because you are profaning the name of Yahweh and using his character 
you are smutting it. So the word tells us that after he has returned us from the lands in which we've been scattered, he would return us in correction and that quietness and trust in Yahweh would be our strength. If we are in correction, that means we should be in a state of humility. We as a people have done the exact opposite when coming out into these lands. We've come into these lands loud and prideful, professing to be the people and causing a scene. And this scene has had a ripple effect on the rest of us who are trying to come out and be quiet. Yes, we know there are people within these lands that know who we are. And there are many who don't know. So to come in what is now their land, it hasn't been our land for the last thousand years, threatening to take it away is very provoking. And also many customs that are practiced by Hebrews look similar to Jewish practices. And those practices, I mean, in keeping Shabbat, the holy days, uh, some of our men wear kippahs and seats and things like that. And we know the current situation of what's been going on in the war within these last two to three months and the ongoing years of animosity between Israel and these Arab nations. And to flaunt these customs in the face of these Arab people is very offensive and it can cost you your life. But Yahweh said that he is going to get the last laugh. He is going to be the one to reveal us to the nations. That is not our job. That is not our place right now. We have not yet been chosen to be the kings and queens of the earth. So do not walk around prideful in these lands thinking that you are untouchable. And as an example, I'm going to show you where black Israelite pride will lead you in these lands. These people aren't giving me my passport and I have done nothing wrong. Um, I'm screaming out injustice. This is dead wrong. Okay, so I left here in Tunisia and I went to Egypt. And I have done nothing wrong to these people. That Egypt banned me and held me and my daughter, 13, in a room, held us up in a room for like four days, made us pay for our food and all kind of wickedness and shit up in Egypt, which nobody said I couldn't go back to Egypt. Although I completed two years of work for the Most High from my deliverance, April 2nd, 2021 to April 2nd, 2023, the Most High Yahweh delivered me and my daughter from out of the USA captivity, and he sent us to Dahab and to Cairo, Egypt. After two years, he took us out of there on my 52nd birthday. Uh, April 2nd, 2023, my daughter and I took a trip to Jordan on the ferry. They asked me, they put my eyes through a machine called the Irish Guard, and they had the nerve to ask me, who are my father's father's fathers? And I told them the truth, that they were slaves. They came through the transatlantic slave trade, and we are coming back home. So ever since that incident, they said that they didn't let us come into Jordan. They put us on a boat, back on the ferry. They let all the Caucasians in and all the other people in, and they put us back on the ferry, and they told us that we cannot come into their country. So ever since that day, my passport has been effed up. My passport has been messed up. I have done nothing wrong. I am not a criminal. I have done nothing wrong, but deliver messages. And speak as the Most High Yahweh will have me speak. I'm not a pussy, and I don't have to be quiet. This is my mouth. Okay, so that was six months ago. Six months ago, I'm at the airport right now. See all my people right here? All Beit Israel is a community originally from the United States with roots in the Black Hebrew Israelites movement. Now based in Israel, the religious group believes Tel Arad to be the true Jerusalem. These are the people of the book. That's right. Even the, the Israeli government, however, does not recognize Tel Arad as a holy site. Israel have a law. You see, that indicates that if you have a holy place within the land of Israel, that you should be able to visit there freely you see, we're having, having to pay entry for it. So because of that, we want what everybody else, what every other community have in Israel. We want our people that's coming from America, our people that live here in Israel, we want to be able to enter into our, the holy place. Leader of Beit Israel, Hoshua Amariel, is citing an Israeli law enacted 52 years ago. The law says holy places will be protected from any desecration with freedom of access to those who hold them as sacred. Tel Arad is currently under Israel's park authority, where it is being treated as a national park and campsite. Beit Israel's activities are slowly being banned from the site, and its members must pay a fee to enter for prayers. This is like talking for the Passover. We're going to put the blood on the doorpost, like our forefathers did in Israel. And I want you all to remember this is a remembrance of our Savior, Yeshua. Doorpost 1-1. Doorpost 1. Doorpost 2. Children of Israel, remember this remembrance of our forefathers were taken. We should do the same as remembrance. So the, the death angel will pass over our camp. Reside with peace and security. Just from day four to moving forward. And hallelujah to my sister here.
I'm just now seeing this an hour ago. They love to use scriptures they don't understand, Malka. Texts that put them to shame and leave them confusion. Yes, this person is confused with these scriptures that they put up. But confuse them, Yahweh, because the wicked will be confused to the very end. Hallelujah. That's his word. That's his word. You can't be mad. You're going to be mad at that person now. You're going to be mad at her now. You're going to rebuke her now. You're going to question her words now. That's the word of Yah. Let's go to Yehoshua on the matter. Do we have to pay our own way out of captivity? All right. So we are in Mark 12. Now, all of you know the way that I roll on my channel. At this point, this video is going to be long. However, I don't want it to get too long because I'm going to break it up in parts so that you can digest it fully. And so I'm going to read verses 1 through 17. And in your own time, read the entire chapter for your edification. And as I expound on these scriptures, I will try to maintain the integrity of what the author is trying to convey to us, the reader, within its context. And it's important for me to go from verse 1 to 12 as one thought and then finish that thought with verse 13. And this is the parable of the wicked tenants. So Mark 12, verse 1, he began to speak to them in parables. Why did Yehoshua speak to the people in parables? We can go to the chapter where he explains this. The disciples say, well, why do you speak in this way? And he says, I speak in this way because there are those who are wicked, hearing to do evil, and they can't hear it. However, I am giving you the parable and I'm going to explain it to you because it's been given to you to know the mysteries of Yahweh. And so to them, it's a parable. But as he explains it, as for us to discern what he is saying to us here, his disciples here, and his assembly here. It's hidden in plain sight, but it's wisdom nonetheless. So he goes on to say, a man planted a vineyard, put a hedge around it, dug a pit for the wine press, built a tower, and rented it out to a farmer and went into another country. So hallelujah for Yahweh's word. I'm going to expound on this. Nabi Esibaya explains throughout the volume of Torah what exactly this means. So as he says, a man planted a vineyard, put a hedge around it, and dug a pit for the wine press and built a tower. He's saying that he set an assembly in place. The hedge around it is the protection of Yahweh's word. And he dug a pit so that the people can be pressed and refined into fine wine. And that tower that's built in the middle is his prophets, his apostles, is his preachers, his teachers, and ultimately Yah Yehoshua. And so this man, as Yehoshua is speaking, is him. He is the one that planted a vineyard. He's the one that planted his seed, his remnant, the elect, the chosen, in a vineyard to bear sweet fruit, which is fruit worthy of repentance, something worth eating, something worth boasting about which is to boast in Yahweh, how good Yahweh has been, what his word has done for you, how you planted it within your soil, and it grew into beautiful fruit. You are walking his word out. And it's a beautiful thing because not only are you glorifying Yah through your deeds and your actions, but other people are seeing it and they're also glorifying the Father in heaven. And that hedge around it is the protection of the Torah by his judgments, his counsel, as well as his statutes and his ordinances, which is the commandments. They all have a principle attached to it, and we must learn and understand that so that we can continue to walk in wisdom and in the knowledge of him, even now on this side of the world. That's when you can really prove Yah's word, is when you no longer have the protection of Pharaoh. And so to dig a pit is to dig a place for that wine to go into so that it can be gathered and put into wineskins. We know that the wineskins is supposed to be us, and the wine is that goes in it is supposed to be the blood of Yehoshua. Yehoshua talks about wineskins. What good is an old wineskin when you put new wine in it? All it's going to do is burst. Make, therefore, yourself a new wineskin so that you can withhold that wine. And that tower that Yahweh built is his prophets and his, and his priests. 
and his apostles. You have to be led by leadership, by a true called leadership of Yah Yahushua, one whom Yahweh, Yah Yahushua, has sent. Not just anybody. Someone who has been tried and proven, not only through their own life's example, but also through adversity and persecution. And hallelujah, Nabiya Sibayah, as she's still doing the work of Yahweh with us, she is that tower in the midst of us. And I thank Yahweh for her leadership. So that man rented it out to a farmer and went into another country. Verse 2, when it was time, he sent a servant to the farmer to get from the farmer his share of the fruit of the vineyard. They took him, beat him, and sent him away empty. What just happened? What was the purpose of that? Let's read on. Verse 4, again, he sent another servant to them, and they threw stones at him, wounded him in the head, and sent him away shamefully treated. What is going on? Wounding his head and sent him away shamefully. Who was the head? Yah, Yehoshua. What are these stones that they're throwing? Accusations, slander, false judgments, ill will. All of these things are wounding the head of Yah Yehoshua. Verse 5, again he sent another, and they killed him, and many others beating some and killing some. What is going on? Should the man stop sending servants to see about his vineyard? No. There's something evil and insidious going on with the farmer. He's hiding something. He's keeping something away from the man who owns the farm. But also the fact that this man is away at another country, this farmer is taking advantage of that because he's away for a time. He's away. I mean, you can't touch him. He's not in my vicinity, right? So I can keep sending back these servants of his, wounded, even killed. Until eventually, verse 6, therefore, still having one, his beloved son, he sent him last to them, saying, they will respect my son. But those farmers said amongst themselves, this is the heir. Come, let's kill him, and the inheritance will be ours. Despicable and wicked. So these farmers have been given vineyards, and they've been entrusted with them for a time, while this king, while this man, while this owner is off away in another country. And when this man sends his beloved son, who are we talking about? Yehoshua, to go see about his land, his vineyard, his people, and his prophets. He's saying, they will respect my son, because this is my son. But no, the farmers are conspiring to kill him and take his inheritance. What are we talking about? What are we talking about? This is Yehoshua prophesying about what the Pharisees and Sadducees were doing in the midst of Yehoshua's walking, talking, and his overall ministry. How they were conspiring to kill him because they didn't want to give up the inheritance that belonged to him which was the kingdom of heaven. They wanted to keep it for themselves. They wanted to take the people, the vineyard. They wanted to take the hedge, the Torah. They wanted to take the wine, which was the memorial, the blood, the purpose, the repentance, the service, the offerings that were supposed to give to Yahweh. They wanted to take that and stone the prophets, who was the, the tower built in the, in the middle of it. And they wanted to kill the son too. They wanted to keep the people, bondage to them. Hello, they were the pharaohs of that time, stopping, hindering, putting ahead of the people, stumbling blocks, so that they could not walk straight to Yahweh, Yah, Yehoshua. These are you guys as leaders, putting stumbling blocks before you all, confusing you all with the same scriptures that Yahweh is saying, this is my word about coming out, this is my word about evil, wicked Israel. This is my word about how y'all continue to rebel against my commandments. These are the same scriptures that y'all keep twisting. It's because y'all are being taught falsehoods. Y'all are being taught by devils, by those who hate the Son. I said that before, that those of you all who hate Yehoshua, y'all will be exposed. Even if you ask a leader straight questions about Yah's word about his Torah, about his commandments, 
they should y'all should be able to answer them, especially when you act, when you give them questions about Yahushua. You will soon learn that a lot of these leaders don't really like Yahushua. They hate him. Yahweh's word is good altogether. Genesis all the way to Revelation, it speaks about the same thing. The consequences of sin, the reward for obedience, everlasting life, and Gehenna, who is the king of glory, his son, and also Satan and his minions in the history of this world. That's from beginning to end. You can't chop it up. You can't use one-liners and then make your own doctrine of it. Unfortunately, that's what a lot of our leaders are doing, and the people are believing it. Because you have newbies coming into the faith, ignorant, don't know nothing, and they're just receiving, and they're taking it as truth. And then you'll have some students, like the one in the comment section, twisting Yah's word. That is a reflection of whoever it is that they're listening to. And it's falsehoods. And it's bitterness to the beloved son of Yahweh, Yah Yehoshua, who only for a time rented out his vineyard to the leaders to the shepherds, to the teachers, to give them the word and to bring them back to him, to teach the word of redemption so that we can be redeemed back to the son and the father. But the leaders aren't doing that. Verse eight, they took him, killed him and cast him out of the vineyard. They did this to the son. What therefore will the master of the vineyard do? He will come and destroy the farmers, and will give the vineyard to others. Is that my judgment, or is that Yahweh's judgment? The farmers are the leaders today. Those of those who are steering his sheep away, and not giving them the true meat, milk, honey, and wine of the word, Yahweh says he will destroy them, and he will give the people to others meaning those who are more capable. Verse 10, haven't you even read the scripture? The stone which the builders rejected was made the head cornerstone. Who are we talking about? That precious stone, Yah Yehoshua. Yes, the stone, the builders rejected it. The masons rejected it. The leaders rejected them. But it has been made the head cornerstone, the head the one head that they keep wounding or sending away shamefully and treated illfully, these leaders continue to reject them. But Yehoshua will be made the head of the corner. He will have the final say. He will be the end all be all. He will get the last word. Verse 11, this was from Yahweh. It is marvelous in our eyes. They tried to seize him, but they feared the multitude. This is the Pharisees and the Sadducees. They tried to take him away. And they all said, oh, snap. <laughs> Yahweh sees me. This exposed the intents of their hearts, and Yehoshua knew it. They tried to seize him, but they feared the multitude, for they perceived that he spoke the parable against them. They left him and went away. I'm going to keep speaking the words of Yahweh, and I'm not going away. I'm not leaving this post, as I am here for those who are preparing to leave America and believe. I am here for you, and I'm doing my best to encourage you and inspire you by Yahweh, Yah Yehoshua's word, through his Holy Spirit to do so, to show you, to prove to you that this is possible. And this is where I am. This is where I want to land. 13. They sent some of the Pharisees and the Herodians to him that they might trap him with his words. So I wouldn't be surprised that after I post this, that there'll be more people in the comment section. But by the might and by the spirit of Yahweh, I will stand on Yahweh's word and I'll continue speaking. Verse 14. When they had come, they asked him, teacher, we know that you are honest and don't defer to anyone. For you aren't partial to anyone, but truly teach the way of Yahweh. That's flattery, very condescending. But Yehoshua listened. He perceived their thoughts and discerned their words. Let's continue. Is it lawful to pay taxes to Caesar or not? Is it lawful to pay taxes to Caesar? 
So let me let me let me put on top of that another question. Do we have to pay our own way out of captivity? Let's see what Messiah has to say about that. Verse 15. Shall we give or shall we not give? Now, of course, these are the Pharisees and the Sadducees. They're receiving tithes and offerings and money from the people for the work of Yahweh. And so this is a trap question, basically saying, well, if the people don't give us money, should we give money to Caesar? Should we do what's lawful and pay taxes? This was a trap question. In the same way that someone would make a statement that they don't have to pay to come out, they're also saying that they are free to do whatever they want, that if they wanted to leave, they don't even have to ask the government. They don't even have to go to the proper channels in order to get permission to leave. Same concept, paying Caesar what it is that he's requiring you to pay, but also paying tithes and offerings to the true ones whom Yah sent, the ones who are living by it and doing the work on the ground. Hello. Shall we pay or shall we not pay? But he, knowing their hypocrisy, said to them, hypocrisy. They knew the answer already. They knew the answer already. They just wanted to trap him, Yah Yehoshua, in his own words. But because he knew their, hypocr their hypocrisy, he said this to them. Why do you test me? Bring me a denarius that I may see it. Listen, they brought it. He said to them, whose is this image and inscription? So we can put up a dollar bill. We can put up a quarter. We can put up a hundred dollar bill. It's an American bill. That means that that is the land that we're subject to. That is the land of which money and system that we're, that we're using for the time being which was also in their residence, belonging to Caesar. And Yehoshua answered them, Render to Caesar the things that are Caesar's, and to Yahweh the things that are Yahweh's. They marveled greatly at him. Give to Caesar what belongs to him, and give me what belongs to me. When something is given to you, when Yahweh has entrusted with you the Torah, the understanding of Torah, you must do it. You must give it back. We do not belong to ourselves. We do not belong to anyone on this earth. We don't belong to our families. We don't belong to our friends. We don't belong to a society. We belong to Yahweh. And it is Yahweh who will bring us under his rod and into his fold, which includes other people. Let Yahweh decide who that is. Yahweh decides who is his and who is not. The same way that judges decide whether or not someone is guilty or not guilty. The evidence is there. The same way that someone who is poor can be given something in order to accomplish what it is that they need to accomplish. Whether that be food, shelter, clothing, it doesn't matter. You, on the in, in the meantime, you render unto Yah what you are responsible for. It is Yahweh who gives us the will and the strength to do. We are in this world of the living. This world runs on money. However, it is Yahweh who gives us the breath, the knowledge, the insight to be skillful in what we do. And if he's blessed you with money, you are supposed to give it back to him. A tenth, he says. Anything more is cheerful. It's a thanksgiving offering. But if you hold back what is Yahweh's, you are stealing. You are a thief. And he will count it against you as an abomination of pride. The whole duty of man is to serve Yahweh, to fear him, and to keep his commandments. Render unto Yahweh what is his. And that is your life. He says no one will redeem you because he's saying, I am not with you. He's saying, you keep disobeying me, therefore I'm not going to be your kinsman redeemer and redeem you. That's also a principle in Torah. Your kindred can redeem you when your contract is up with your master. Yahweh is saying, 
Our contract is up with Babylon. It's time to come out. But if you don't want to come out, I can't redeem you. The blood that I shed for the obedient will not cover you in Babylon because you are disobedient. That's Yah's word. Know it for yourself. Lastly, I'm going to go into uh, Romans 13. This is also a precept to what Yehoshua just said. Verse 1. Let every soul be in subjection to the higher authorities, for there is no authority except from Yahweh, and those who exist are ordained by Yahweh. Yahweh has established his government, his laws, his righteous rulings in the earth. Every country and every people are governed by a law. Yes, it is established that Babylon America is wicked. They have perverted justice. They are corrupt in their judgment, but that does not mean that the law that was put down through Yahweh's word is. It's the people who do it. It's the people who pervert it. Verse 2, therefore, he who resists the authority withstands the ordinance of Yahweh. Anyone who breaks the law or, or resists the authority, anybody who's put there to put us under submission is going against the ordinances of Yahweh. Hello. Sounds like a Pharisee. Sounds like a Sadducee. Sounds like a wicked tenant. Sounds like a Herodian. Sounds like a rebel to me. And those who withstand will receive to themselves judgment. Those who withstand or resist will receive to themselves judgment. So if we're talking on face value. Those who are in jail obviously resisted authority and law. It's as simple as that. But I'll go so far as to say those in this walk who continue to resist Yahweh's judgment will receive to themselves Yahweh's judgment. Ready or not, here I come. You can run, but you can't hide type stuff. Verse three, for rulers are not a terror to the good work, but to the evil. You're not going to get in trouble if you do something good. You're not going to go to jail if you did something amazing and helpful. Now, maybe in America, you will, you know, <laughs> feeding the homeless, but have to follow the law. Get a permit if you want to feed the homeless and if you're being harassed by, by police. That means that there's a law in place that says you can't do this thing freely. Just do what you need to do in order to do good. But if you resist the authorities and you resist the ordinance of Yah that was given through those authorities to put you under subjection, you're going to go to jail. They weren't put in place to render terror to good work, but to evil. Yes, there are evil Israelites. Come on. Like, why is this even a conversation? Why is that even a question? Because you're being condescending. Do you desire to have no fear of the authorities? That's also one of the reasons why Yahweh has put authorities under us is to teach us the fear that we're supposed to have of Yahweh's ordinances. If we have no fear of Yahweh through his ordinances, we are rebels, we are lawless, and then there's anarchy in the, in the world and, and just complete chaos. Do that which is good and you will have praise from the authority. For he is a servant of Yahweh to you for good. But if you do that which is evil, be afraid, for he doesn't bear the sword in vain. That's the authorities. The sword is Yah's judgment. He doesn't have that authority for no reason. He can enact it by his own wielding. There's a story. This young woman was very arrogant and very prideful when she approached the judge. She was being convicted of some crime. And the judge gave her her sentence. Let's say, for instance, it was like five years, five years probation. And the, and the young woman was like, anyway, rolled her eyes at the judge. And the judge said, ho, 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 wait a minute. Come back, come back in here. What did you say to me? And she goes, I said anyway. And he goes, oh, is that what you want to say? Okay, I'm going to add five more years to your probation. Did she stop there? No. She just said, anyway. You can't do nothing to me. Anyway, all right, 10 years, that's fine. That's fine. The judge said, oh, 
You still want to be arrogant and prideful and think that this is a joke? I'm going to wield this sword to my benefit to make sure to put you under subjection because you are resisting the ordinances of Yahweh, which is to do good. Just do good and you won't be in somebody's court. But the moment you think that you're above the law, you're going to get humbled. He is a servant of Yahweh, an avenger for wrath to him who does evil. Yes, Yahweh will enact his wrath and will avenge himself through the wrath of authorities, through the wrath of the judge, the jury, and whoever you're getting sued by as well. That's how Yah gets his vengeance. And that's how his wrath is subsided when the authorities enact his ordinances over all who do evil. That's, that's like Torah 101. Therefore, you need to be in subjection, not only because of the wrath. Hear me. We need the law, not only in the place to not do wrong, but to also just do good. Not only because of the wrath, but also for consciousness sake. What you've been given, what you're entrusted with, what you've been taught growing up right and wrong is. For your own consciousness sake, we need to be put in subjection. That's all man. That's everybody. Everybody needs to pay for a passport in order to fly internationally. That's everyone. Even delegates need to do that. Even government officials need a passport. Even, even children who are, who are one years old need to get a passport. Nobody's exempt from that. And so just do right. Just do what you're supposed to do. Follow the rules and all will be well with you. Verse six, for this reason, you also pay taxes for they are servants of Yahweh's service, continually doing this very thing that goes back to pay Caesar, that the things that are Caesar's, pay your taxes, pay your back child support so that you can receive your passport. It is what it is. Pay your debts owed to the IRS. Pay your debts from your mom to your mom and your dad and to every other relative that won't give you the honor and the permission to get your passport or your children's passport. Even the help to get it, pay them back. It's as simple as that. Stop being prideful. Spend your money on paying your debts. Spend the time that you use to commit the crime to pay in prison, to pay for that crime. Because some of us will pay for our crimes with our life. And so if there are Israelites in there who are truly repentant, y'all won't suffer them to be destroyed. That's not his word. But if they're in there at the time of destruction, that's Yah's judgment. And who am I to speak against it? For this reason, you also pay taxes, for they are servants of Yahweh's service, continually doing this very thing. Therefore, give everyone what you owe. If you owe taxes, pay taxes. If customs, then customs. If respect, then respect. If honor, then honor. Listen, I am nobody. I am, you know, to some people, just a singer. I am to some people, just a woman. However, I have done a lot in this walk for my own salvation that is worthy of respect. And even much so, my teacher give her her honor and her respect by letting you all know to defer back to her lessons because she's the one that gave it. She's the one that by the obedience of Yahweh Yah Yehoshua delivered the testimony of the come out message. It's not mine. I don't take any credit for any of this. I give her honor and I give her respect. And I also give honor and respect to Yahweh Yah Yehoshua to speak the truth and nothing but the truth. I am not subject to somebody on YouTube. I am subject to Yahweh. That means anything I don't say, I am held accountable to. And anything I do say, I'm held accountable to. I'm clear about this. My, my channel is public. I am accountable to a whole assembly and to a council. If I said something wrong or if I done something wrong, I will get I will get checked. It's happened in the past. No problem, no issue. That's called humility. Everybody is called to that. But I will be bold 
in wielding the sword of Yahweh against rebellious speech. I don't know who you are, but I don't. I, it doesn't even matter. By the time you spew this out, all all bets are off. I'm not. I'm not a respecter of persons. If this is what you believe, you're a rebel. And if you don't receive that, then there's something you have to check within yourself that would suggest otherwise. Because I can see it. Yahweh sees it. I, I Yahweh sees it by the word that I'm saying to you. So I'll finish with this. Love fulfills the law. Verse eight. Owe no one anything except to love one another, for he who loves his neighbor has fulfilled the law. So one would say, but sister, you're not speaking in love. Love is judgment. It's giving somebody the straight word of Yah. If it has to be in rebuke, if it has to be in admonishment, if it has to be encouragement, whatever have you, that's love. I've been speaking in love since the moment I came on the scene on this channel. But that doesn't mean that someone every now and again, is not going to get loved in a rebuke. Verse 9, for the commandments, you shall not commit adultery. You shall not murder. You shall not steal. You shall not covet. And whatever other commandments there are, are all summed up in this saying, namely, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Love doesn't harm a neighbor. Love, therefore, is the fulfillment of the law. Like I said, I didn't harm anybody with my words. It was the truth. If anything, I challenged your scriptures and I challenged your, your question and no harm was done. Nothing happened. And I would want somebody to do the same thing for me if I'm truly of the faith and I truly am keeping the commandments of Yahweh. I didn't take nobody's husband. <laughs> I didn't murder nobody or slander anyone here. What I said was what I saw and what I said was what Yah said. You're a rebel. I didn't steal anything from anybody. I'm not taking anybody's money. I'm not taking anybody's time. They came on my channel and I'm not coveting anything. There's nothing here that I desire other than to make sure that my, that my brothers and sisters get the information that they need in order to obey the word of Yah. If anything, I'm coveting the Holy Spirit so I can do this in, in, in the fullness and in the boldness that Yah Yahushua did and all the other prophets. I'm no prophet. I'm a disciple. But who's to say what Yahweh has in store for me? That's that's for that's for him to show and to, for him to prove. This is the fulfillment of the law. And that's what it is that I'm doing. Verse 11, do this knowing the time that it is ready time that it is already time for you to awaken out of your sleep. Stop sleeping, my family. Come out of your slumber, come out of the laziness, come out of the darkness of your own mind and your own perceptions of life and what Yahweh is telling you. Yahweh is a fearful of Elohim. You should have fear when you hear the words of Yahweh. And nothing that is ever said from any anybody on these platforms should put you back to sleep. Meaning, put you back to, oh, okay, I'm good. I'm good then. I'll stay here in America, no problem. Okay, I, I mean, I, they say keep the commandments, but who can hold me to it? Who can hold me to that? Because I'm not in an assembly. I just log on on YouTube and just listen to every leader that I feel like listening to. And even they tell me that I don't really have to keep the commandments of Yah. I know. Awaken out your slumber. For salvation is now nearer to us than when we first believed. Yes, it is. Come on, y'all. You see the times. Don't play with it. Verse 12. The night is far gone and the day is near. Let's therefore... Throw off the deeds of darkness and let's put on the armor of light. The deeds of darkness is every wicked thing that would hold us back from keeping the commandments of Yahweh in perfection. Putting the armor of light on is the light of Yehoshua. Using Yehoshua's words to cast down these imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of Torah. If you don't know Torah, you don't know Yehoshua's testimony. If you don't know Yehoshua's testimony, you don't know Torah. No matter what you think your understanding is, if your teacher, if your leader is not a professed leader, shepherd, prophet, apostle, priest of Yahweh, Yah Yehoshua, that is his true name, and, and they need to come in that character explaining Yahweh's name and his authority, then they were not sent. 
if they have no testimony of faith in that name, if they have no record of their character through somebody, their only ministry, so-called ministry, is on YouTube, and all you all you hear is a voice, and you don't see a face, they're not sent. Yahweh does not come like that. He proclaims who he is through the boldness of that prophet, and he also proves his name through that prophet and by what that prophet speaks. And you better be careful. You better be careful. And in the midst of so many false leaders and so many pro- false prophets, Yahweh says, but my people continue to stone the true prophets, continue to stone those that I sent. They continue to accept those of who are fake, who are false, who are phony, and continue to stone those who I really sent. That means that there's two different messages happening. And that in Israel, whoever you think you are in that fold, continues to heap up leaders after their own lusts and keeps lifting them up as the true called and elect of Yahweh. Meanwhile, they keep sending those who Yahweh sent shamefully treated and wounding them and throwing stones at them. That's the reputation we have. That's the reputation of our forefathers who killed Yehoshua and who refused to obey Yahweh's commandments and to repent so that they can receive everlasting life and inherit the kingdom. That's our reputation. So am I I offended by this? Am I angry? Am I I taken aback by any of this? No, this is actually nothing new to me. Like I said, I'm used to this and it's going to keep happening. I just got to get my sword sharpened. Let's walk properly as in the day, not reveling in drunkenness, No one would ever talk to somebody like this in real life. Never. I would never allow anybody to approach me like this in real life. That's not proper. That's not even social etiquette. That's not even uh, proper etiquette in a presentation with you being someone in the audience addressing a speaker. That's not even proper. Not in sexual promiscuity or lustful acts. And not in strife and jealousy and it's striving is striving i see it 14 but put on yah yahoshua hamashiach and make no provision for the flesh or its lusts when those types of questions happen you got to be able to put them in subjection not only in the physical meaning to have an answer against those types of condescending questions, but also to maintain the integrity of you. Make sure your emotions are not, make sure you're not, you're not being led by your emotions and by any lust that will have you to look at this like an opportunity of winning a fight. No way is that in my spirit. No way is that in my character or my behavior. I'm simply given the word of, yeah, this person is the one that's responding in exclamation points. Nevertheless, Yahweh wants us to be sure, like a man standing on a rock, on a a sure foundation, so that we can continue to build our house and it not be taken away when the siege, when the water, when the rafters, when the chaos comes. Be rooted in Yah Yehoshua, my people. Learn Torah, learn the testimony of Yah Yehoshua, and put them combined together. Again, this is Malika. Thank you for watching the content. Bless Yahweh, Yah Yehoshua, through his Holy Spirit for the opportunity to come on and to give you all some edification. Like this video, subscribe to the channel, enable notifications, and prayerfully, I will continue with some more answers to your questions. Put your comments in the comments section below. And as always, within the discretion and discernment of Yahweh's Torah and his wisdom through Yah Yehoshua, I will answer them accordingly. Thank you again for watching. Let it be enlightenment to your eyes. Consider your ways. Repent and do good. Come out of America, my people, so that you partake not in her sins and receive not in her plagues. It is a place. It will go down. And there is a place to go to for safety. That's Yahweh's word. Selah.